Hey everybody, uh, today I just wanted to show you um, one technique that I used when I worked on a film called Teeth a couple years back um, doing the opening title sequence. Um, there were a couple, you know, multiple techniques I used in the opening. Uh, it was a 90 second opening, but um, one of the things I wanted to show you here today was how I did these predator cells, these um, these long these long cells here, these guys that attack those other ones. Um, there were many ways I could have gone about doing it in Lightwave. I could have modeled it as you know polygonal models in Modeler, um, but I chose to do uh, a method uh, that gave me some more kind of dynamic randomness to it and uh, a, a much quicker way to animate um, so that I could get through any tweaks that I needed to. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I did that today. All right, we'll start off in Modeler and um, just make a box start at the origin and I'm just gonna drag it down here uh, use the up and down uh, up and down arrows on the keyboard to give it some segments and uh, hit enter right click and lasso these points here and delete them and highlight this first point up here and click on the, uh, the S for selection sets and I'm going to make a new one and I'm going to call this um, fixed end it can be anything you want um, hit create and uh, I'll just name this layer while I'm here um, 2d underscore chain and I'm going to hit uh, S to save it and I'm going to call this cell oh, I have one here cell 01 and save and I'm gonna send this over to layout okay hit six to look through the camera and I'm just gonna back the camera up a little bit grab this light and move it up out of the way and give myself about uh, about 200 frames to work with here okay so under objects select my cell object under properties dynamics add cloth dynamics to it and uh, double click to open up the properties and under the fix uh, section here I want to select the fixed end point set that I created okay and I don't want to add gravity or anything because this cell is you know kind of floating around and in, in its own space down there without any gravity um, okay so let's just close that off for now and over to the move and I'm gonna start it off screen here and up here um, I'll show you another technique of how to quickly keyframe things um, and I do this sometimes just to kind of get a quick sketch of motion in a scene um, and I kind of like working this way um, it, it's a quick way of kind of sketching out a motion so I'm gonna start the uh, time slider around here and uh, I have auto key turned on so when I click uh, when I click play I'm gonna drag my left mouse key and just kind of like back and forth move this guy and then have it swim off okay now I'll pause this and I'll rewind back and this time I'll start here again in the timeline and I'm gonna just animate the Y that was just recording the X and Z values I'm gonna record the Y value now by right clicking this time so I'm just going to put it about here and click play and now right clicking to get kind of the Y motion of this thing here and I'm just kind of quickly animating a, a random motion and okay so here we have something there's a lot of keyframes to it there's a pretty much a key on every frame um, we can go into the graph editor and select the X, Y, and Z channels for those and right click and select them all. And uh, if we go up to keys and set the key reduction threshold, um, let's just try it around like 90. And now if we say reduce keys, it takes out a lot of the keys and gives us, uh, we can run it again and it'll take out even more keys and uh, that's good enough. I'll leave that there. 
I'm not really going to uh, mess with the motion at this point. Okay, so now we have this uh, stick <laughs> moving around through the scene, this vertical stick. Okay, so uh, we added cloth dynamics to the scene, but we didn't calculate it yet. So now that we have a motion for it, let's just rewind back to uh, zero and hit under the modify tab, the IKB calculate. And now we get kind of this uh, long stretchy version of itself. So I'm going to hit P for properties again and go into cloth effects. Um, under the advanced tab, one thing I don't want is the stretch limit to be at 100%. Maybe it's about 5%. And uh, under the basic tab, I want to up the viscosity a little bit, um, maybe around 10. And then I'll hit uh, calculate again. Okay. So now what we have is a basic kind of, you know, movement of this thing through a thick fluid or something it looks like. Um, one other thing I want to add to this is just a little kind of jittery random motion to the uh, to the cell, um, and I'll do that by adding a, an emitter, uh, um, a wind uh, effector. So I'll go over to items, add dynamic objects, wind. Okay, and I'm going to under wind mode make this a random wind, and I'm going to turn the fall off to off and I will make the power about uh, like about 6,000. Okay, and I don't really want to look at that thing while the scene's calculated, so I'm just going to slide it down out of the view here. Um, so now go over to modify and calculate again. And this time we get these kind of like little crinkly motions to it. It just kind of like bunches up on itself when it comes when the when the when the cell is like stopping its movement the wind kind of takes over more and, and adds some jittering to its uh, shape. So it's kind of this little uh, wormy thing moving through the viscous fluid now. So okay so now if I rendered this right now you, we won't see anything. This is just um, we'll see the single point polygon chain which is not what I want to see. So if we hit F7 to open up our Viper window, go over to Render tab and open up our Hypervoxels, click on our cell and activate it. Okay and uh, if we hit Render we can see that we're getting something here. Um, under Object Type I'll set this to Volume and I'm just going to use a preset um, to kind of set up the look of the uh, cell. So under uh, Windows, click on Presets to open up the Hypervoxel presets. And under the Strange section, I'm just going to pick this one that's called Tissues and double click Load Settings and say Yes and Yes again. Okay, the next thing I want to do is mess with the shape of the, um, the cell. Uh, right now it's all kind of a uniform thickness. Um, so if I go over to the geometry particle size and uh, texture it, click T for texture, the layer type set to gradient and based on the distance to object. So at the beginning of the object I will scale this down to kind of a thin size and then uh, it gets a little bit thicker. And then another key. Make sure you set the object to cell here. I had forgotten that. And the third key I want to kind of taper off again. Have its tail be kind of thin. And just kind of move that until it... Uh, move it too far, you'll see the points that make up the uh, model. So just make sure that you're not going to see that as you adjust the size of your uh, your settings here. Okay, um, let's say that that's good enough here. Okay, I'll click use. 
Um, the neat thing in uh, hypervoxels is I can actually um, click to make a preview and it should be rendering here yeah here it is coming in from the side of the screen so uh, the hypervoxels are just drawing themselves on the points of that 2D chain so if your object starts moving a little too quickly like it is here it may start to break up into the points so you might just want to add um, a lot more points to your 2D chain when you make it or make your hypervoxels a little bit bigger so that they still kind of blob together and form a mass. Um, it really depends on how fast your object will be moving or how much it will stretch and the points of that chain will stretch apart. Um, so just be careful of that. And uh, I'll let this render just a little bit more. Yeah, you can see the points on the chain here are kind of breaking apart. Um, but if we click to play, you get this neat preview of your little amoeba thing swimming through the fluid. Um, so you can tweak this as much as you want and get it to look right. Um, tweak the hypervoxel settings themselves. Uh, I just wanted to show you this one technique for how I did part of that uh, sequence for the opening of that. So uh, hope you like it and uh, see you guys next time.